what's up YouTube this is too raw for TV all right in this video uh, this video will be a response to town biz shout out to town biz if you're not subscribed to town biz please subscribe to town biz all right um, he was talking about um, the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame induction uh, class for next year 2020 is going to be one of the best class of all time uh, these three individuals no doubt about it, man. Um, Kobe Bryant, a lock. First ballot. Five-time NBA champion. Nine-time, I think, all-defensive first team. I think he was an 18-time all-star. I think that's second all-time only to the great Krim Abdul-Jabbar, who was an all-star for 19 times. Uh, uh, Kobe played all 20 seasons of his career with the Los Angeles Lakers. All right. At the time of his retirement, that was the most seasons played for one uh, franchise that's since been broken by Dirk Nowitzki, who played, uh, I believe it was 21 seasons for the Dallas Mavericks. All right. Um, I mean, what can you, I mean, Kobe, I mean, one of the greatest competitors, you know what I'm saying? This guy, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie. You know, I, I, it's no secret that I rooted against Kobe a lot. Uh, you know, I wasn't a Kobe Bryant fan. Um, I had some feelings, feelings of antagonism toward him, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I don't give a shit if Kobe was shooting five for 22 when his team needed a big shot. More often than not, Kobe would make it and I would feel fear in my heart. You know what I'm saying? I think this guy's going to make this. Boom. Make it. He'll make it. Kobe could be five for 20, but when his team need a bucket, He'll hit three in a row. That's just how Kobe was, man. You know what I'm saying? Of course, the 81 points. We all saw what he could do, you know, when he got the green light, you know. Uh, and this was a different era. This is a league back then that averaged 97 points per game as opposed to 112 now, 113. Totally different environment. I mean, all you got to do is take what he did back then and just add 15 points to it. At least every game that you saw that he had those explosions, just add 15 points to it now. That's how dominant he was back then. Tim Duncan, quiet, reserved, you know what I'm saying? Might be the most underappreciated, along with Moses Malone, the most underappreciated superstar of all time in the NBA. Five time NBA champion, all right? Uh, was the cornerstone of those great Spurs teams of the late 90s into the mid 2000s teens. The Spurs were excellent the entire time he was there. Was no real lulls. They always won 50 games or the equivalency of 50 games every damn year. The Spurs were always there. Now, they weren't a dynasty in my mind because they never won back to back, but they were a team to be reckoned with. And the scary thing about Tim Duncan is he actually sacrifices numbers for the betterment of the team. This is a guy that could have been putting up Shaq numbers. Easy. He could have been averaging instead of 22 and 12, 27, 28, 13, 14. But he played within the, the floor. He played within the offense. And, uh, and for that, you know what I'm saying, that shows his, his selflessness. Kevin Garnett, I really love Kevin Garnett. The Minnesota Timberwolves version of him. The Boston Celtics version of him, not so much. Thought he was an asshole. But, you know what I'm saying? He was huge in that 2008 finals. You know what I'm saying? Along with him, him and uh, Paul Pierce. He won that matchup between him and Kobe Paul Gasol. Uh, won his one and only championship with the Boston Celtics in 2008. The kid, the big ticket, Kevin Garnett. Always loved his intensity. You know what I'm saying? Uh, loved his mindset. Totally 180 of what we see today. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have no friends out there. Everybody was his enemy. If you weren't on his team, you was his fucking enemy. You know what I'm saying? Shit talker, trash talker. You know what I'm saying? But he backed it up almost every time. So these three guys are an infinite lock. Chris Bosch is a little bit like a tier below these guys, but he's still... In my opinion, the first battle Hall of Famer, multiple time All Star, uh, 
Of course, he won two NBA championships with the Miami Heat. And his career, as superlative as it was, was cut short. As we all know about the blood clot condition that he has. And, you know, it, it would have been dangerous for him to continue on. So he had to cut his career short. I think he was just in his early 30s. I don't remember exactly how old he was, but he was not an old guy at all. Maybe 31, 32. Um, had to cut his career short. But he did enough, in my opinion. He accomplished enough. And had so many big shots for those Miami Heat teams. You know what I'm saying? That he warrants a Hall of Fame induction, in my opinion. Now, some of these other guys... Uh, I think Town said Amari Stoudemire, Andre Miller. Andre Miller was solid, one of the better point guards in the league for a long time, played a very long time. Uh, but nothing about his career, to me, rings out Hall of Fame. Uh, he kind of, I would put him more in that tier of a Mark Jackson. You know, he's sort of in that tier. As a matter of fact, he's not even as accomplished as Mark Jackson because Mark Jackson you know, did make it to the uh, NBA Finals and were on some good playoff teams. So he's a little bit below where I would put Mark Jackson. You know, so I don't really, I don't see him as a Hall of Famer. Uh, Amara Stoudemire could have been, but injuries, uh, you know, kind of hurt his career. Uh, you know, if you if you're a guy who didn't really accomplish much, as far as, like, playoffs, finals, then you sort of look at production. And Stoudemire had some great years, but I just don't think he did enough to be in the Hall of Fame. Because if you're going to put Amari Stoudemire in the Hall of Fame, then you have to put Chris Webber in the Hall of Fame. You can't be that that fucking inconsistent. Uh, Chris Webber was a better player and was and was more accomplished. And even Chris Webber is not in the Hall of Fame more than 10 years after his retirement. So, you know, you can't put guys like Andre Miller and and uh, Amara Stoudemire in the Hall of Fame and then keep out guys like Chris Webber, uh, Tom Chambers, uh, Norm Nixon, Kevin Porter. Uh, shit, even Rasheed, Rasheed Wallace to me has a better case than Amara Stoudemire. You know what I'm saying? So... I don't think those guys are in the hall, going to be Hall of Fame. Um, I saw a name. I don't even know if he's still eligible or not, but Buck Williams is interesting because most people wouldn't even think of Buck Williams as a Hall of Fame. But they think of him as a dependable, solid guy. If you're older, if you're younger, even my age, you kind of think of Buck Williams as a dependable role player. You don't really remember Buck Williams at his best with the the then New Jersey Nets or the Portland Trailblazers. But, you know, I think if Buck Williams were on some better teams, won a couple of championships, he probably would have a better case. Let me just check out Buck right quick. Buck Williams played in over 1,300 career games, averaged 13 points, 10 rebounds, and one assist for his career. Uh, he's a three-time All-Star. Shot 55% from the floor for his career. I'm trying to look at the totals more so than the averages. Was a workhorse. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm trying to look at some of his numbers. Scored almost 17,000 points in his career. Had over 1,100 blocks, over 1,000 steals. And one of the greatest rebounders in the history of the NBA, over 13,000 rebounds. You know, uh, let me look at playoffs for this guy right quick. Didn't have a lot of deep playoff runs except for those Portland teams. Uh, yeah, I can't really justify putting him in the Hall of Fame, man. But the rebounds were, were very impressive, though. Rebounds are very impressive. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I, I guess you can't really put Buck in there, man. But uh, he's a very accomplished guy. But, yeah, at the end of the day, those three guys right there, you don't have to think about it. Chris Bosh, you might have to think a little bit about it, but I think he's the first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, I do think they need to go ahead and put Chris Webber in, though, man. You know? Uh, and, and the reason why I say that is I'm trying to figure out why Reggie Miller was second year. He wasn't first ballot. He got in his second year. But Chris Webber, he's been retired, like I said, for over a decade, and he's still not in the hall. And I remember it was a couple of years ago, people thought that was going to be the year for Chris Webber. And a lot of people were surprised that he didn't get the call. And, um... Yeah, Chris Webber retired in 2008. Played in over 800 games, averaged 20.7 points, 9.8 rebounds, 4.2 assists. One, two, three, four, five. Six-time All-Star. Um, just looking at his career, had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, 10, 10 seasons averaging over 20 points per game, led the NBA in rebounding in 98-99 season, great passing big man, never won a championship, uh, you can make a case for that 2002 team as far as them being cheated or whatever, uh, average a career high 27.1 points per game during the 2000-2001 season, which is also the same, same season, I think he had that career high 51 point game, and uh, average a double double for one, two, three, four, five consecutive seasons. <sighs> the reason why I'm, I'm looking at Chris Bosch is because I, I mean, uh, Chris Weber is, I honestly think that Chris Bosch is a better player. Than, uh, excuse me, Chris Weber is a better player than Chris Bosch. So, if you're going to put Chris Bosh in, I think you have to put Weber in, especially considering it's been over a decade since he's been eligible. Well, not over a decade. Uh, it's been 10 years since he, 11 years since he retired. And uh, five or six years since he's been eligible. So, it's like, you know, you just wonder... If you swap guys, like if you put, for instance, let's say you put Chris Webber instead of Rasheed Wallace on those Piston teams in the mid-2000s or something like that. And let's say they went on to win. Uh, let's say they still won a championship with Chris Webber being the Hall of Fame now. You know what I'm saying? Like I do think that sometimes championships can add to your luster because – for instance, Rip Hamilton. Most people wouldn't think of Rip Hamilton as being a Hall of Famer. But you do think of the fact that he went to two NBA Finals, won a championship in 2004, and he led the Huskies, him and Khalida, Khalida, Khalid Ilamin, I think his name was, to a championship, a national championship back in 99, I think it was. So you do have to look at other things. You know, and then when you look at Rip career like that, plus he had a long, successful career with the, with the Pistons, then you think, well, maybe he is a Hall of Famer, just not first ballot. So that's why I look at these different guys. Like, I'm, I'm just at a loss as to why Chris Webber is not in the Hall of Fame. You know? But I know this video is not about Chris Webber. It's about, about the four guys aforementioned. And uh, well-deserved, man. Tell me what you got.